Emma, as Josh presents this ring to you, do you take this ring as a symbol of Joshua's love and devotion and a sign of his loyalty and abiding love? I do. The Institute raises little predators. Breaking news, a dark family secret is exposed. It's like the epitome of evil. Welcome down this sad, never-ending rabbit hole, friends. The new Duggar documentary series is being released by Amazon on June 2nd. It's called Shiny Happy People, and it's supposed to be four episodes long and will feature a wide range of people connected to the IBLP and the Duggar family, including Jill Duggar Dillard, the Holt family, who I've made extensive videos about, and even Jen from the YouTube channel Fundy Fridays. I was so surprised and happy to hear that she's appearing in the docuseries. Check out her video all about it linked below. For the next week, I'll be sharing short clips from 19 Kids and Counting and talking about how these moments must now be deconstructed from a totally different standpoint than when they were originally filmed 10 plus years ago. Our new perspective recognizes that the Duggars were living a life of secrecy, covering up for their eldest son's crimes and pushing a doctrine that helped create the kind of man who gets caught looking at CP on his personal computer in a car lot he's forced to work at after losing everything because of a major infidelity scandal. This was some serious dysfunction never portrayed on camera during the many years of filming the Duggar family for their hit TLC show. Tonight, we start off with an infamous clip of Josh Duggar singing the IBLP's loyalty song to his new bride Anna at their massively celebrated wedding. Anna, what symbol do you give of your love and devotion to Joshua? This ring. <laughs> <laughs> the audience chuckles as Anna hands Josh his ring because Josh had pulled an awkward prank earlier in the ceremony where he pretended to lose Anna's ring and John David, Josh's man of honor, had to run around like a chicken with his head cut off to find it. <laughs> The joke went on for way too long, but it's indicative of a big facet of Josh's personality. He loves to be the center of attention. He's seemingly and outwardly overly friendly and outgoing, but behind that facade, it's like he doesn't even really understand human interactions very well. He's highly immature. His jokes don't make a lot of sense. And even the way he laughs at his own jokes comes off as forced and never genuine. In this scene, it feels like the audience tries to humor him. But even among this IBLP community, it's like there's confusion and annoyance with Josh's constant showboating. Joshua, do you take this ring as a symbol of Anna's love and devotion and a sign of her loyalty and abiding love? I do. The loyalty song is actually meant to teach young children the character quality of loyalty in their life. But I thought, what a greater example of loyalty than marriage. And that's where I really felt like that song really displayed my emotions and my feelings for Anna. And I thought, what a special way to emphasize that. When I first saw the wedding, I thought Josh had written and made up the loyalty song. That's what made the most sense to me because the lyrics are pretty immature and it's not well written. And I thought that makes sense for like a 19 year old boy who just really, really wants to get married and was told to make this song happen by whoever planned the wedding. But it turns out this song was actually written by Bill Gothard, the head of the IBLP, who never got married, but apparently and allegedly had inappropriate relationships with young girls. I mean, really, those words spoke the very emotions from my heart. And I was so emotional at that time anyway, it was hard for me to really think, OK, I got to sing this. I got to get these words out. And here ensues one of the most awkward scenes in Duggar history. It sounds better because the voices are sped up in this clip. I like it better this way because when I listened to it in regular time, I was so horribly embarrassed for Josh and everyone who had to be there to listen to this. He's clearly not a musician or a vocal artist of any kind. And the song generally speaks to the lack of growth and the immaturity that this couple is coming to this marriage with. 
When you have hard times and all others are gone, I will be there when the troubles have come. Through sunshine or rain, when no help can be found. Stop. Collaborate and listen. Guess what, guys? The loyalty song is actually a children's song in the IBLP. It's a song taught to children to sing in school, usually their home school or at their home church. Things may seem hopeless, but just look around. I'll be there to the end with you. I'll do my best. He'll do his best mm, to be faithful and true. Okay, guys, you know, it's really hard to watch this scene because we all know that much more than having some kind of crazy song sang to you at your wedding in front of hundreds of people in your community, I'm sure Anna would have preferred to actually have a faithful and loving husband. This song is farcical, and I can't help but wonder if Josh ever did really think he would try, even give it a try, to stay loyal to Anna. Because there's no denying that in Josh's mind, he was a big man on campus, like the most famous guy ready to get married in the IBLP, and he was going places. He looked at it like Anna was lucky to have him, and I think Anna looked at it that way too. Because you see, Anna grew up in poverty. They lived in a trailer, often didn't have enough money to feed all of the children. She was homeschooled, extremely sheltered, and her family was completely devoted to the IBLP. How did Anna even get chosen for King Josh, one of the most eligible bachelors in the IBLP community? A lot of us think it has everything to do with the fact that Anna's father was a prison minister, and he ministered heavily to men who had committed terrible crimes, including S offenses. Now, we've been told that the Duggar family made Anna's family, the Kellers, well aware of Josh's past and the quote-unquote mistakes that he had made. Who knows if they told them all of the truth, half-truths, or no truth at all. But I think it's possible that they did tell them at least a little bit about what had happened. And this is part of the reason why Anna was chosen to fill this role in Josh's life. She had a heart for prison ministry and a heart towards forgiveness. And I believe that Jim Bob recognized his son Josh was going to need a lot of that. It kills me knowing that Anna has no idea how hard these days are really going to get. To think about Anna, who was indoctrinated with the loyalty song from a very young age, finally being able to get married to the golden boy of the IBLP and having him sing you this exact song on your wedding day must have been like a dream she never thought could come true. It's like Josh became a savior to her in many ways. She was still a young girl, kind of like a baby who had been overprotected her whole life. And now Josh was going to raise her up over the next couple of years to be the kind of woman he really needed by his side as he strove to climb both the social and political ladder in front of him. The editing that TLC did when Josh performs the loyalty song, is a good representation of who this loyalty song is really for, in my opinion. Jim Bob and Michelle are ecstatic that he's singing this in front of everyone and on national TV as really a love song to the IBLP and everything that they've done as parents to raise their kids under this doctrine. We will choose the right way, my commitment I'll prove. Yes, I will be loyal to you. This wedding was truly one of Josh's and Jim Bob's best attempts at showboating. I think it was very romantic, uh, and I think it's something that, that every woman dreams of her husband singing to her. 
have a feeling that Jim Bob and most of the men present at this wedding have no idea what most women truly dream of. I don't have the receipts, but I can only assume that Anna's parents weren't able to provide or pay for a wedding like this for Anna, and that Jim Bob and Michelle probably footed the bill. I imagine that Anna was so grateful. She wouldn't have wanted to rock the boat or make any of her personal preferences known. I'm not even sure if she had personal preferences at this point in her life anyway. I'm sure she was just feeling extremely lucky and grateful to move up in the world, to be a part of a family that could financially support her, give her more freedom than she'd had before, and provide a good lifestyle for whatever children she was going to have with Josh. Josh, you know, um, from the very beginning of his relationship to save their first kiss for the night. And, uh, Josh, yeah, Josh, you may kiss the bride. Ugh, of course. Jim Bob Duggar had to make this specific announcement. He didn't officiate any other part of the wedding, but of course he had to get in on this part. Once again, we're seeing those like weird, inappropriate boundaries within the family. I was, I was nervous about my first kiss. Um, I didn't want to like completely miss or do something really weird, but it was great and it was really special. Well, not only to us, but to all of the other young people there in the room, it was quite a testimony to be able to say they've waited. <laughs> Jim Bob's all like, <laughs> you're about to have your first kiss and I'm watching you. And then you're going to do, you know what, afterwards. <laughs> it's like Jim Bob himself doesn't even have the emotional maturity to take this seriously. It's all just about the fact that Josh saved his first kiss, not his first other things for his wedding day, and that he'll finally be rewarded with the SEX he's been promised by his parents for years now. I'd like to introduce to you Mr. and Mrs. Joshua James Zucker. So death do you part is a commitment that when you make that, there's a security that goes with that. And I think in a relationship that has that kind of commitment, um, you're more secure and you will. Oh, Michelle. I've always really hurt for Michelle, though so many people are hypercritical of her. But it must be devastating to have your first son admit to doing awful things to your daughters and eventually be locked away in prison for accessing CSAM. In an interview for the court a couple of years ago, Jill Duggar said that Michelle wishes Jim Bob would just stay quiet sometimes. That was as far as she would go in talking about how she still has a relationship with her mom, but she lacks a relationship with her father. And her mom does wish things could be different and be better. This clip of the loyalty song from 19 Kids and Counting is just one of the many examples in which the Duggars put on a show that wasn't reality. The loyalty song is an example of how Bill Gothard exerted his power and control over everyone who followed the principles of the IBLP from the very young to the very old. He did his best to indoctrinate children starting young. He recognized that that's when they were most susceptible to fully believing in every story he sold them. That's why when people are hypercritical of kids like Jessa Duggar, who's grown up to be a seemingly stable wife and mother, I don't fully understand it because we all know that these girls were indoctrinated from a very young age. It's going to take extended time and effort for all of them to find their own path in the world. Watching this loyalty song scene serves as a reminder for me that Josh Duggar was always putting on a facade for the cameras. Let me know your thoughts about this scene below. Do me a favor and like this video and subscribe to my channel so that you can catch me down my next rabbit hole. Thanks for joining me tonight, friends.